The Power Query Advanced Editor can be a scary place if you're not used to looking at code. So in this video, Phil will take you behind the scenes and get you comfortable working in the Advanced Editor. He'll show you how Power Query structures the code, how to edit it and add comments, and even how to add a custom function. If you've only ever used the user interface to create your transformations, then you may not be used to seeing the code underneath the hood. In this video, I'm going to show you what's happening in the Advanced Editor. I'm going to look at the code and how you can write your own code in the Advanced Editor. And hopefully that will make you a bit more confident to use it when you need it. These tips are for both Power Query in Excel and Power BI, but I'll be using Excel in this video. As you can see, I've already got some dummy data loaded from a table. Uh, this is coming from, from an Excel worksheet. Typically, when you're working in Power Query, you're working with tables and you're doing things like adding columns or you may be filtering rows. Using the user interface like this, you don't need to worry about the M code that actually carries out these transformations. But if you look in the advanced editor, you'll see that I have a step for added index and a step called filtered rows. And this is the M code to do the things that I want. Let's start off by looking at the structure of this code and what each step means. The code is broken into two sections. You have a let section and an in section. The let area is where the steps of the transformations are and the in statement or the in section that tells the query editor what you want to return from the query. So you can see it's returning the result of the filtered rows step. In the let area, we have four steps, as I've said, and these are the same four steps that you can see in the applied steps area. Now the names aren't exactly the same, and that's because a step with a space in it must be surrounded by double quotes and begin with a hash. As you can see here, we've got hash and then change type in double quotes. Step names automatically created by the editor uh, are generally in this form, but they don't have to be. I mean, you can change them yourself if you like. So let's just change this and we'll call it changed underscore type. Remove the hash and the double quotes. Now, anywhere that that step name is referenced, it must, must also be changed. So on the next line, let's change this. And if I click done, the query will work exactly as it was before. The only difference will be in the applied steps area, you can see the name of the step has changed to changed underscore type. So each step must have a unique name. Uh, you can see that, as I said, obviously they are one step per line and each step ends with a comma. Now they don't actually have to be on separate lines. I can just bring these up onto one line. So I now have three steps on one line and then filtered rows. If I click done, this makes absolutely no difference at all to the code. It still works. We still have four applied steps and everything's as before, but obviously Having things on separate lines makes it a lot easier to read. The first step is almost always named source, but it doesn't have to be. That's a system generated name, so I can change that to anything I like. I must change any reference to source, so change it here and then click done. Again, the query works fine, but the applied steps is changed. The first step is now called my data. The default is to return the result of the last step, which here is filtered rows, but you can actually change that in statement to return any step you like. So let's change it so it returns the added index step. And we get the table that results from the added index step. I'll just change this back. Now, more often than not, the result of a step is a table. As you can see, each one of these steps results in a table, but that's not always the case. Uh, let me just delete this filtered rows and added index column, and I'll show you that. Let's say we want to work out the total of this amount column. Well, I can select the column and then under transform and statistics, I can choose sum. This adds a step called calculated sum, and now the result of this entire query is a single value, 3081. Now that's not really that helpful for me here, but I do actually want this sum value to use in calculations later on. So how am I gonna do this? Well, let's go into our advanced editor, and I can move this step 
above the changed type step. And then I'm going to add a comma. And because this is the last step, because change type is now the last step in the let section, it must not end with a comma. So I'll remove that. And I want to return the changed type step. So over here in the applied steps, if I look at calculated sum, I have a step that the result is 3081, which is the sum of the amount column. But that's taking the amount column from the step after it. So it might seem a bit strange that I can use the changed type step here in a calculation that actually precedes the change type step, uh, but that's the way it works. And to use this calculated sum, I'm going to change the name of the step. I'm going to call it total. I'm going to add a custom column. And the name of this column is going to be percentage of total. And what I'm doing in here is I want to divide the amount by total. And this gives me the percentage of the total for each one of the values in the amount column. So on row one, 153 is 4.9% of the total. 223 on row two is 7.2% and so on. So I can create steps that hold values for me and they don't even need to be dependent on other steps. I can insert a step that holds a constant value. So let's say I want to work out how many of my values have reached or exceeded a particular target value. Well, I'm going to insert a step right at the beginning, call it target, and I'm going to give it the value 500. If I click on done, this at the moment has no effect at all on the query. We still get the same result for this added custom uh, step. But right at the top, my target step has the value 500. And what I'm going to do with this is add another custom column, call it target met. And the calculation is going to be if the amount is greater than the target, then I'm going to use true else false. So it's going to return Boolean values. And you can see I have three rows, uh, five, seven, and 10, where the amount exceeds the target value. If I want to change this target value, let's say my target now is 600 rather than 500. I just change that. I don't need to change the custom step I added. The code is exactly the same. And we now only have one row on row five where the amount exceeds the target value. Let's say I don't want it to return Boolean values. I want it to return text. So let's jump into the advanced editor. You can see here the added custom one step. There's the code that the editor has created for me when I use the user interface. What I need to do is change these true and false values to text. So if the amount is greater than the target, then I can write target reached else. You can put anything you like here, but I'm just going to use an empty string. And we only got one amount where the target has been reached. So we can have steps that actually hold values for us. They can hold individual values like numbers or a piece of text. They can hold lists, records, or tables. Let me show you another one where I'm going to create a list and I'm going to call it uh, favorite fruit. I want to know where my favorite fruit has been the top product. So this is going to be a list. So we surround it with uh, curly braces and end the line with a comma. And this is text. So my first favorite fruit is apple. And I'm just going to also put in orange. Click done. And now as before with the target value, this doesn't change the query at this point in time. But if I click on the favorite fruit step, you can see I have a list with two elements, apple and orange. So if I now add a custom column, call it favorite. And I know this is not the US spelling, but we're in Australia. And I'm going to use the list.containsAny function. And this requires two lists. The first one is the top product, and it must be supplied as a list, hence the curly braces I've just typed. And the second list 
is my favorite fruit, which is already a list, so I don't need to surround it in curly braces. If I click OK, this is going to give me Boolean values because I haven't specified any other uh, logic here, any other code. So it will default to giving me true or false. And you can see where my favorite fruit is the top product in row one, four, and nine. Using the advanced editor, we can enter comments. It's always good to comment your code. And there are two ways we can put comments in. If we want to do multi-line comments, then we begin those with a slash asterisk and we end with an asterisk slash. So typically I do this at the top. It might say written by me and you may have some other information like version for your code or what particular workbook you're using or some other information that may be useful. If I click on done, those comments are not visible. You can't tell that there are any comments. There's nothing uh, showing up in the applied steps. You have to go back into the advanced editor to see them, but you can also use single line comments and these are quite useful. Let's say I want to have a comment here for target to just tell me what it is or for anyone else who's using this, it will tell them what it is. So a single line comment begins with double slashes and my comment's going to be used to see if target is met. Now when I click done, over under the applied steps, you'll see that target now has a small eye or information icon beside it. And when I hover over that target step, I get the tooltip pop up that I've just typed in. If I right click on that step and look at properties, my comment is actually now the step description. Final thing I want to show you is I'm going to add a function in here. It's going to be a very simple function, but it will demonstrate how you can do it. I'm going to call the function double because all I'm going to do is double a number that's supplied into the function and this equals. And then the next thing you need to do is the parenthesis, which is uh, telling the code what arguments are going into the function. I'll come back to that in a second. And then the code for the function follows. Now the structure here is similar to the code for a general query. So it has a let statement and an in statement. Let's go back to our arguments. We're going to supply one argument or one parameter, uh, which is going to be a number. I'll just call it value here. And what I'm going to do is the step is going to be called result. And that's going to equal the value times two. And I'm going to return result. Now I need to just put a comma here as well because this function is in line with the rest of my code. So it uh, needs to be finished with a comma. So what I've done is said, here's a function called double. It takes one parameter or one argument called value. And what this function does is it returns a result where the result is value times two. If I click done, all I've done at the moment is create the function. I haven't used it but you can see in the applied steps, it's listed at the very top. So let's use the function. We'll add another column, call it doubled. And the result of this column is going to be a function double, and I'm going to supply the amount. Click OK, and there's our results. I hope you're now more confident to open the advanced editor and tinker around in there. Of course, you can always click the cancel button if you make a mistake. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.